Logo for the New York Times. OpDocs. The New York Times OpDocs presents My Disability Roadmap. Dan Habib and Samuel Habib. Unified Sports Basketball Game 2017. My name is Samuel Habib. He takes to the court. I live in Concord, New Hampshire. Samuel passes the ball. I've been in regular school and classes since preschool. Teams line up for post-game high fives. In my senior year of high school, I asked my friend Anita to go to the prom with me. She said yes. And then I had a seizure. Damn. Samuel and Anita in prom attire. But we did go to the prom together and we had an awesome time. Enthusiastic campers on stage. I like hanging out with my friends. When you come to the sky, and going on adventures. Yes, sir. On a zip line van a roller coaster. And I'm a speed freak. Down a snowy hill in a sit ski, his partner standing behind him. I am in my third year at the local community college. I really want to start dating. I set up a profile on Bumble and Hinge. It's really hard to meet new people when I can't drive in my friends' cars or get into their houses. Out for a stroll. Someday, I want to get married and maybe have kids. But I need to figure out how to do all the things I want to do. Organize stacks of medical supplies getting packed into boxes. Nobody in my family has a disability. My close friends don't have disabilities. Dan helps Samuel dress in a hotel bathroom. They don't understand what it's like to have a disability. Film plays in fast forward, getting ready for the day. I don't want to rely on my mom and dad so much. What about the airport? Dan Habib. TSA agent hands bottles of medications to Dan. Samuel gazes out the plane window. Then he steers into an accessible taxi. I want to figure out how to follow my dreams. Driving past the Washington Monument. But nobody tells you how to be an adult let alone an adult with a disability. The day is cold and sunny. His communication device and the GoPro topple. That's not good. There are badass people with disabilities who figured it out. I want to talk to them. I can learn from them. Maybe they could be my mentors. Heading into an Art Deco apartment building. Hello. Oh my gosh, long awaited. Samuel, I can't believe it. I am so psyched to finally meet you in person. <laughs> so nice to finally see you. Oh my God. Judy Human is one of the greatest disability rights advocates of all time. She's spent decades fighting for civil rights for disabled people. She's a revolutionary. Looking up from his device, Samuel grins. I am currently working with my dad on a new film project. I'm asking each person about relationships, work, education, and every part of living a full life with a disability. Dan straightens Samuel's head. Samuel taps his device screen with his finger. What did the teachers and principals expect of you during your school years? And what did they expect you would do as an adult? I don't really recall people seriously asking me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I mean, honestly, I don't think I ever really felt comfortable and confident in any of my classes. I could get involved in debates and things of that nature, but that kind of inner sense of confidence and not being afraid, I, I don't think I really ever felt that. Home videos of young Samuel. You're a little different than me because when you were born, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act and Section 504 was more than 25 years old, but I was born in 47, and there were no laws in place. Your parents could talk to lawyers or advocates. None of that existed. What we've been discussing, Samuel, in part is allowing disabled people to feel proud about who we are and to feel like we have a right not to be discriminated against. As a young child, he used a manual wheelchair. Now the FDR memorial statue where Roosevelt's wheelchair is fully visible. I have cerebral palsy. 
That means my brain communicates with my muscles differently than most people. The original FDR statue, a large cape hiding his wheelchair. The only thing I dislike about having a disability is all of the medical stuff and my uncontrollable movements. I call the uncontrollable movements the wiggles. They suck and make me really tired. In his Red Sox World Series hoodie. I also have a hard time controlling the volume of my voice. Samuel and Dan side by side. All right, so for Bob Williams, what do you want to ask, Bob? I did. What did? Samuel's mouth shapes the words before he speaks, his eyes half closed with focus. I, your, pa your parents <laughs> think but about your, <laughs> your future when, when they come when they found out that CP. CP. Great. When do you want to ask that question of Bob? First. First. Okay. Breaks out into a huge smile. Can we program it in your Toby. Incredible. So so bright. I love it. A film crew ready to record. What did your parents think about your future when they realized you had cerebral palsy? Bob Williams, disability rights policy leader, helped gain the passage of the ADA. Bob's head lowered. He looks through glasses to type on his wheelchair-mounted communication device with stiff fingers. Like many of their generation, when I was born, my parents were told to institutionalize me and to never look back. Instead, they raised me in the same rough and tumble world of love as my brothers and sisters. When I grew up, the chances were slim to none. For a kid like me with cerebral palsy who drooled and had little to no understandable speech ever entering a public school, let alone graduating from high school and college, having a career, getting married, or having a family. Younger Betsy sleds with Samuel in front in a toboggan with back support, his older brother sliding behind them. Holding toddler Samuel in their yard, Dan lowers the boy to kick a soccer ball. I have an older brother named Isaiah. He is 24 and lives in Flagstaff, Arizona. Whoa. Photos, the boys snuggle and cuddle. I didn't see him for over a year because of COVID, and I really missed him. On a FaceTime call. Did I have sex? <laughs> Hell yeah. Samuel smiles. Isaiah smirks playfully. <laughs> Tell you about it? Oh my god. I can't get into detail like that. I think you should read some erotica. Isaiah puckers at Samuel from the iPad. I love my brother, but he doesn't have a disability. I want to talk about sex and relationships with Keith Jones. Caitlin Ramsey, direct support professional, and Samuel weave through traffic. He has been a mentor for me since I was in elementary school. He tells it like it is. Who the hell is that grown ass man in the wheelchair? <laughs> Grown up. They fist bump. <laughs> a hand lowers sunglasses over Samuel's eyes. In medical masks, they ride the elevator to a spacious room at the JCC New York to interview Keith, Crip Hop founder and human rights activist. Samuel smells gleefully as his finger swipes the selection. Do you have advice for me about sex? Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> Rule number one. Rule number two, rule number three, all the way down to 100, bag it up. Go bag it up. I don't care if you have to pull it over your head to your feet, bag it up. 
there are many, many, many ways to, to negotiate the path to getting in intimate situations. But sex, where it has meaning, where it's not just a physical act, where it's emotional, intimate, it's the full connection with the spirit and the body, that's rare. That comes with somebody who understands who Sam is, knows what makes him laugh, knows what makes him cry, and wants to be there for him the whole time. After seeing Keith, I went to talk with May Soon Zaid. She's hilarious. She uses comedy to take down ableist culture. Thanks for getting together, May Soon. It's awesome to be able to talk to you in person. I hope you don't disappoint me. <laughs> I'm trying to learn more about relationships and sexuality. <laughs> I want to start dating, but it's hard to take that first step. How and when did you start dating? <laughs> so like I said, Muslims don't date, we get married. Um, <laughs> I think relationships are super overhyped, so much, so much work, and that like even sex is so overhyped. My advice for relationships is honesty and being realistic. If someone doesn't want to date you because you're disabled, that's not the person that you ever want to date, ever. What is the one piece of advice you'd want to tell every young adult who experiences disability about transitioning to adulthood? The one piece of advice I can give people is you're not alone, find your community. He beams. Samuel and family dance in the yard, run on the beach with the service dog Proton. My extended family is fun. They accept me as a person. They include me. They understand me. They have high expectations for me. That's why it's so frustrating to meet people who just don't get it. At the airport, someone skitters awkwardly out of Samuel's way. Samuel's doing documentary film work. And you are such a cutie. You know. How do you get so cute? <laughs> Huh? His smile vanishes. Can you say answer? I just say, I'm kind of talking to him like it's a five-year-old, but he's a 20-year-old college student. Okay. You're, so, 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 I, so I, how I just, old are you now? <laughs> so just, you know, you can talk to him like you would any other 20-year-old college you? student. <laughs> are you 20? He gazes up to her, then sighs, eyes wandering. You don't know me. My name's Joe. And I've been talking with your dad. Yeah. So Samuel shuts down a little bit when he feels like he's being I'm talked sure. down to, and I feel like you're just talking down to him I a don't little need bit. To. Yeah, you're like just he's a 20 year old college student, and I don't. Where do you go? To, you in school now, hey? No. <laughs> All right, we're gonna line up to go get first on the plane. Hey, have a good have trip, a great trip. All right, thanks you too. Look, watch yourself. I don't want to run anybody over. Samuel's face, furious and stony, locked in a grimace. Ah. Yeah. What are you feeling? Uh. Oh. Uh, uh. Oh, oh. What are you feeling? Oh, oh. Pissed off, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. Dan tenderly grips his son's shoulder, Samuel's t-shirt. Without communication, there is no freedom. They head down the jetway. Disabled people like me are isolated and excluded from so many aspects of life. But when people talk down to me, they underestimate me. On the plane, Dan prepares medicine for Samuel's feeding tube. Samuel watches the landscape unfold below. Touchdown on a cloudy day. They join Andrew Peterson, marathon runner and fetal alcohol syndrome activist, smiling at a picnic table in a tree-filled park. Samuel taps pictures on his device that accompany peer program statements. I have difficulty talking, and sometimes people talk down to me. Do you feel underestimated because of the way you talk? Never. I ignore anyone who refuses to accept me. It's not easy. Instead, I always believed in me. Were your classmates ever mean to you in school? Some laughed and called me names far more walked by me 
White guy. Didn't exist. Samuel's face still and pensive, then he crosses a wide busy street. There is an idea I like called the dignity of risk. Taking risks makes me feel proud. Powerful. Confident. Bold. I need to take risks so I can live an adventurous and full life. One risk I want to take is moving away from home someday. I met someone who took that chance when she was about my age. A Zoom call. Hi, Ellie. I'm Samuel. It's awesome to meet you. Hey, Samuel. Nice to meet you. Uh -huh. Thanks so much for your time today. I've got a bunch of questions to ask you about your transition to adulthood and your career. What is the biggest risk you've taken in your life? Probably when I moved to New York City and I went to NYU because I really was stepping out of the bubble that I grew up in and the safety net that I had. And I sort of was taking on the world on my own. Of course, I had tons of support, but I was really more exposed and more vulnerable. And so I was young and I was 18 and I didn't really even know better. So there was no other option. I was just like, I'm just going to do this. So I did. Ali Stroker, Broadway and TV actor. When I was 19, I also took a big risk. I decided to do deep brain stimulation surgery. All right, so we want to say goodbye here. Right. I hoped it would get rid of the wiggles. Be awesome. Nurses roll his gurney through the corridor. Samuel is asleep after surgery, a handwritten note on his chest. Please be careful around my IV. It has been pulled out before, and I'm anxious it'll happen again. The surgery took about nine hours, and then I was in the hospital for two days. Samuel sleeping, his service dog kissing Betsy. A wide strip of his hair shaved off. They turned on the electrical current a couple of weeks after surgery. In his standing wheelchair, Samuel is still. It feels really good. My body is calm and the wiggles are mostly gone. I had to get back in the bag They tried to deny me, they wouldn't believe it I told them it's happening facts I was grinding all along, never front It's still in the back Deep brain the stimulation has changed my life Getting a Red Sox tattoo Before the surgery, when I got excited Like when watching sports My body would get really wiggly Sometimes, I would have to stop watching Now, my body is calm Shows off his tattoo to Red Sox players, signing autographs for him. Meeting all of these mentors has made me even more proud of who I am, and proud to be part of the disability community. Disability is part of the natural diversity of the world. Shopping at the farmer's market with Dan. We should not be segregated. You don't want to be rolled over by this chair, it's gonna hurt. What motivates you to be a disability rights advocate? Lydia X. Z. Brown. Every single one of us has a moral responsibility to challenge injustice and violence oppression in every way possible. We can't wait for or rely upon non-disabled people to save us. What motivates me is the knowledge that there is still injustice and oppression, and I cannot rest until I end for it. Social justice. The MLK Memorial in D.C., then at four primary election rallies. I'm learning to become a better advocate. I know I need to be persistent and work hard. I get tired, but I won't give up. Hi, Senator Warren. I'm a college student and I live in Concord. I want to work and earn money, and I get social security, so if I earn money from work, my social security will go down. Please tell me about your plan for this. So check out my disability plan, which was written by the disability community. How will you support more affordable housing for people with disabilities? For everything from long-term care to uh, disability uh, support. I love that question. Thank you. Hi, Vice President Biden. How will you support more inclusive education for students with disabilities? You should be integrated into all of the classes because you're smart. <laughs> you're smart, you're smart. The disability is not, does not define who you are. It doesn't define who you are. I can't believe he stroked my face. Weird.
an article from the Mighty on Samuel's thoughts on the interaction. The video of me with Vice President Biden went viral. Biden under fire for stroking a disabled man's face. But I voted for him and I hope he is a strong supporter of disability rights and inclusive education. Pushes his ballot into the machine. We have to tell our own story. May soon. Because when non-disabled people tell our stories, we only get to have three stories. Help me, I'm disabled, cure me, or kill me. And when you have more disabled people behind the camera, writing, shooting, editing, directing, creating docs like you are, telling our own stories, then it won't be the endless pity party. Samuel raises his fist high over Zoom. Maysoon does the same. Now, Little Island NYC, a new fully accessible park. Samuel and Caitlin pass a spinning optical illusion by the curving paved path. I face new challenges with my disability all the time. My muscles don't work as well as they used to, so it's gotten more difficult for me to use my communication device or drive my chair independently. Do you want to stare into that? <laughs> but I do not need anyone to feel sorry for me. Excuse us. No. No. <laughs> I can't blame you. I have a good life. I love to travel. I have friends and family and support people that are fun to hang out with. The sun hangs low near the Manhattan skyline. Someone dances on a grid of tiles. Samuel rolls across the tiles, breaks out into a huge smile, and circles back to go again. The sky is pink and orange as they leave the park. Meeting all of these mentors has been empowering. I am part of a strong disability community. We want change and we are going to fight for respect and rights at every opportunity. In medical masks, they join others at a railing to watch the setting sun. People paved the way for me. I want to pave the way for others. Now, I just need to find a girlfriend. Fade to black. Abbreviated credits directed by Dan Habib and Samuel Habib. Producer Dan Habib. Co-executive producers Sarah Boulder and James Lebrecht. Consulting producer Andrea Levant. Editor James Rutenbeck. Composer Max Avery Lichtenstein. Additional music Feso de Madwan Te Uno. Color correction and sound mix Pinehurst Pictures and Sound Rick Degree. Advisory Board, Elijah Armstrong, Alexander Freeman, Taylor Freeman, Tia Holmes, Anna Laundry, Galen Spagler. Audio Description by Social Audio Description Collective. Writer, Cheryl Green. Script Editor, Robert Kinyet. Narrator, Nefertiti Matos Olivares. Thank you. Mitsubishi Electric America Foundation. Westchester Institute for Human Development. Kansas University Beach Center on Disability. Kansas University Center on Developmental Disabilities. Mazelski Family. Millersville University. UMass Boston Institute for Community Inclusion. University of Rochester Strong Center for Developmental Disabilities. University of South Carolina Center for Disability Resources. Left Moving Image Fund. Association of Washington School Principals. Washington Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction. Senior Commissioning Producer Christine Ketcher. Supervising Editor and Andrew Blackwell, series producer Yvonne Ashley Kuajo, executive producer Adam Ellick, co-executive producer Lindsay Krauss. This short documentary is part of a series by independent filmmakers supported by CMP. Executive producers Steve Cohen and Paula Fraley. Copyright Like Right Now Films, LLC, 2022. For full credits, please visit MyDisabilityRoadmap.com.